hey, let's make some live edge serving boards. I've got a craft show coming up and I'm gonna turn this live edge piece that I gave about $40 for into three live edge serving boards. I don't do a lot of craft fairs, so I'm curious, comment below, is that something you wanna hear more about? Do you want me to do a video about the craft fair and maybe things that I took or how I did? Comment below and let me know and that way I'll actually do some filming while at the craft fair and I can talk a little more about that in a future video. First things first, I'm gonna just split this into roughly thirds. So I'm gonna go about here just by eye. That one will be a little smaller. These two will be a little larger and then I can take them to the bandsaw and cut them out. As you can see, this is far from flat. Uh, this side especially, it's got quite the, the bow to it. So I'm gonna take it to the CNC and uh, kind of put some shims under it, flatten it so that we can start working with it. All right, I've got it on the CNC. I've got my flattening bit in there and now I'm just gonna go back and forth until I get this one side flat. That one's all flattened. Now I can move on to the next two. I've got all these flattened on the CNC on one side. It took quite a while because they were really wonky. So I'm gonna turn to the planer to do the other side, referencing off of this flat side. That way I can get the other side uh, parallel and move on with the process. calling an audible this one is so bad here on the end once i planed it down i just saw that it's really garbage i don't know if i'm going to take off this whole amount here but i'm going to kind of trim it up on the bandsaw a lot of this goes all the way through and even if i put bow ties in it it's kind of loose and so i don't like this piece is about to break off right now i don't want that when somebody buys this to uh have it just fall apart so i might just take it right here and let that be the new side and this is going to be a smaller one All right, air compressor, let's, let's hurry it up. It's time to remove the bark from the live edge here. I'm gonna be using a draw knife to do this. This is an older one. You can find these at flea markets. The basic idea is there's a bevel on one side and it's flat on the other side. So if you want to dig in deep, you have the flat side pointed down. If you wanna control that depth a little bit more, you put the angled side down and you can kind of angle and, and not take as big of a bite. It's very fluid. I'm just gonna kinda of go until I feel like this looks right, removing some bark and kind of the, the inner sapwood until I like it. It's not the sharpest thing in the world. That's okay. I'm actually gonna go a little deeper. I like it when you can't see any of the remnants of the bark. So I'm just gonna keep going until this looks right. Another good thing is a Shinto rasp. This has a rough side and a smoother side and you can make quick work of shaping with this thing. That edge right there that I just created is quite sharp. Cut me. The Shinto rasp didn't cut me, the edge of the wood cut me. This makes quite the mess using a draw knife. <laughs> it just goes everywhere. The next part of this project is going to be to correct some of the blemishes and cracks that are in this these slabs. Uh, I've got a bow tie template that's on my Etsy store and on my website. It looks slightly different th from this because when I designed it and started selling it and shipping these, uh, UPS liked cracking them right down the middle. So <laughs> I redesigned it 
it's a better design, but you still get four sizes in one. The way it works is you put this down, clamp it down, mortise out your piece, then use the same thing to cut out your bow ties. I'm gonna use some really blonde maple because I like the contrast. And I'll link below to this as well as the white side router kit and a video where I show how to get perfect inlays using that kit. One of the cool things about this template being made out of clear acrylic is that you can kind of position it around and see exactly where you want to place it on your piece. This leaves sharp corners on these on the actual tenons, but the mortise inside here is slightly rounded because the bit I used is 1 8 inch bit. So that means this is a 1 16th inch diameter. So it really just takes a couple of passes on some sandpaper, just enough to round that corner. And uh, then they fit in there nicely. Because of all of the figure in these pieces, I ended up getting some tear out from the planer and I had to sand a lot. I like to keep a flashlight on hand and use it at a very low raking angle when I'm sanding. You're able to see any blemishes in the wood a lot easier and it will make sure that you get a perfect surface. I filled a few voids with this Starbond Black CA glue if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm spraying it with water. This raises the grain and then I will sand it back to 220, my final grit, one more time. That way when it comes into contact with water, when the customer has it, it won't feel all fuzzy and rough. This was my first time trying out this Atomic Finishes wood oil and I gotta say, I'm really impressed. It's so simple, I just gave it a quick stir, applied a little bit of it by scrubbing it in with a white Scotch-Brite pad and then let it sit for a little while. I actually let this sit overnight, which they said you can do, and it turned out beautiful. The next morning I just buffed off a little bit of the excess and it had a really nice sheen. I just became an affiliate of theirs, so if you want to check out this finish, head to their website from the link that I'll leave below and put in the code Bruce A. Ulrich at checkout. You'll save 10%. All right, I've got some cutting board feet here in my little bins. I'm going to flip these things over and find some good spots to put these feet on here, and these will be done. 
kind of just going to place some of these on here and see where it looks right to have them. With a piece that's not square and, and this and that, there's really not much need to measure. You just wanna make sure that it doesn't, doesn't rock and it sits nicely. Man, these things are smooth. I really like the way these things turned out. They have so much figure and just so much going on. I really spent the time sanding them so they are so smooth that I think people at the craft fair just won't be able to keep their hands off of them and hopefully want to take them home with them. Again, if you wanna see some follow-up about the craft fair or how I did or any of that, comment down below and let me know. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. I don't know which one's my favorite. It might be that one. I thought I wouldn't like this small board as much as I do, but that one's kind of kind of growing on me. And then this bad boy with all the all the bow ties, that's uh, pretty delightful. I just really love how organic it is. And maple and cherry has got to be one of my favorite combos. All right, it's cold out here. Let's go inside. <laughs>